Hello and welcome to the market update for Tuesday, February the 21st. As always, if you have any questions during the week or any questions I don't get to here in the live class, make sure you send those to jerry at traderspro.com and I'll be happy to answer those for you. Apologize a little bit. My voice, my voice might be uh, having a little trouble here in the beginning. I just I took a big drink of water right before I started and it went down the wrong pipe and I've been coughing here for a little bit, uh, so hopefully I can stabilize here uh, pretty quickly. But um, all right, uh, let's get started. Uh, now, obviously, market was closed yesterday, uh, President's Day holiday. Uh, we've had a lot of those lately. Um, we had uh, the Martin Luther King Day in January, and then both the the uh, holidays in December were uh, Monday closures. And so we've had a few of these short weeks. Now, I don't think we have anything else uh, uh, closing down the market until Good Friday in April. I don't know. Is that April or March this year? I can't remember where, where Easter is, lies this year. But uh, if it is in March, then it makes, it'll make uh, four months in a row we've had a short week. But uh, it's it's kind of nice if you if you trade, uh, you know, a lot. It's kind of nice to have these closures. Um, you know, obviously you have your weekend to, to get away from things, but to have that extra day where you don't have to worry about positions uh, is kind of nice sometimes. It helps uh, helps uh, keep you refreshed a little bit. All right. Um, but coming out of that holiday week, we're down uh, quite a bit today. And I've been warning about this a little bit in the last couple of updates. Um, the last Thursday, I was talking about how the market was trying to rally, but it was sluggish. It was uh, it felt like, you know, remember I talked about how we'd open lower and then we would rally into the end of the end of the day, but we were barely pushing to new highs. Um, in some cases we were coming off the highs of the day and had some of these weak closes. There's a lot of evidence in the price action of buying exhaustion. Now, I often say buying exhaustion is not a strong indicator for reversal. It's just not something you would start shorting stocks just because you're seeing buying exhaustion. But it does. It, it it is a it is a little bit of a warning sign to um, be cautious to look for a, maybe a bearish reversal candle or something like that. Um, now we didn't get a, a bearish reversal candle ahead of this. In fact, it looked uh, like Friday looked like it was a little bit of a of a uh, hammer candle formation, which tends to be a little bit more bullish, but. Again, if you watch the price action on Friday, even um, it, it, it instead of instead of it, it felt like it was buying to try to hold up the market as opposed to starting a big move, another big move. It it, it still felt to me like uh, kind of an exhaustive move. We closed off the highs of the day a little bit. That always uh, makes that if it, if it doesn't close at the highs of the day, it always makes that hammer formation. A little bit weaker, um, and so today is not. And, and again, I keep, I kept, in almost all my updates, I keep uh, talking about the VIX being too low. It's too low to get a uh, to get a substantial rally from that point where we were at. And so um, it, this makes sense. This is this is actually the market where last month uh, what happened didn't make sense to me. Um, and the market will do that. It will make these moves that don't make a lot of sense. Today, the move actually makes a little bit more sense to me from the position we're at. Like I said, all the different things I'm looking at, the, the chart, the pattern, the, the price action, the VIX, um, you know, it, it wasn't the way things were behaving um, late last week. Not surprised we're down. Now, the, the key question is going to be, okay, where do we go from here and, and what's uh, what, what could happen from here? And that's what we'll take a look at when we get to the charts. So for the direction alert, so not much to talk about because because of the selling today, it's pushed us back into, again, right in the middle, middle range. This means that uh, we could go either way. Uh, the market could rally from here and it's not overbought. It's not oversold yet though. So it could drop pretty dramatically from here as well if, it, if the market decides to do that. So it's not stretched in any way from momentum or, or breadth standpoint. Uh, sentiment is still very high. Um, and this this would indicate that it could have a long way to drop before uh, sentiment uh, uh, would would get into the into the this 
left side of the of the of the bar here. So, um, but we've been that way for several months, where it's been in this extreme complacent uh, range. Um, buy sell ratios uh, starting to see the, the, the crossover a little bit, sells outpacing buys, but not by much. Again, not stretched in any way, uh, any, not extreme in any way. And that, what that means is when we get to the charts, it, this could just be a pullback within the uptrend as well. And that's one thing we're gonna, we're gonna talk about as, as well when we get to the charts is, is this just a pullback? The sentiment indicators come back uh, quite a bit. Uh, it'll come back further today when um, this updates. Remember, these, all these readings were from Friday's close. It, all these indicators update at the end of the day. Uh, and so we'll see, well, actually we'll probably see, you know, especially like in the buy sell ratios, you'll see probably the sales, uh, jump up, you know, move up pretty significantly on a day like this, um, compared to the buys when this update. So that, that'll definitely change, but it still won't be in an extreme, shouldn't be in an extreme range at least, uh, from today's move. But, but that's one thing to keep, <clears throat> excuse me, you can see that probably later tonight. Hold on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, oh, by the way, I did forget to mention the beginning of class. If the audio is bad in any way, aside from me coughing into the mic, uh, if you're hear hearing any sort of uh, um, anything like an echo or a, 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 a you know, any, any sort of annoying noise that's in the background, let me know. I can usually dial back in and get rid of it. All right. Um, so this sentiment indicator will probably drop down uh, quite a bit further with today's move, but that's that's good. It's telling you it, it, we're not in, it, we're further away from an extreme area. We could continue to trend uh, either direction there. All right. Um, let's take a look at the charts. And what immediately jumps out when you look at this, because this is partly what we were talking about last week, and because we're seeing this sluggish rally right here, um, remember what I said, and I can't remember which, it probably was Thursday's class, I said, that type of behavior where, where it's trying to go higher, you've already pulled back a little bit, like we did back here, and you're trying to go higher, but it's, it's sluggish, it's just, you know, you, you're opening lower, you're trying to rally here, you fade into the close, you open lower here, you, you rally, but you barely go higher. Um, that's a type of behavior you see in a B wave, that sucker's rally, so to speak. And that's that, that's why the, the wave A is the pullback, the initial pullback. Now, usually the feeling in wave A, if I can draw this a little bit better, Wave A feels like the buying opportunity, right? Everyone's waiting for the pullback. Buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. Everyone's hearing that, buy the dip. You get the dip, and Wave A feels like the buying opportunity. Okay, now I can get in. I got the dip. And then what happens a lot of times is that Wave B, it goes higher. It is, you, you are going up, so you feel like you made the right decision. I'm buying the dip, and it's going higher. But like I said, it, it's it's sluggish. It's just not not going fast enough for you. And again, every every rally has these little pauses and can feel a little bit sluggish. But you get multiple days in a row where it just like this, where you're opening lower, barely going higher, or not even able to go higher, or able to push above the previous day's high. Um, that that's what a wave B kind of feels like. By the way, as I'm talking through this, I'm not expecting this to be exact. It's just I want you to recognize price action. I'm trying to teach you how to read price action, and, and you never want to base your trade on one thing. Or, or like I said, I wasn't saying short the market just because it's acting sluggish or the, 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 it feels like buying exhaustion. But it, it warns you. It could warn you not to buy, not to do anything, to sit on your hands and, and wait because you might be in danger of having one more move down. Um, and by the way, when I say sucker's rally, nobody wants to feel like they're buying into a sucker's rally. Uh, you, you don't want to feel like a sucker, right? Uh, you don't want to be labeled as a sucker, but all of us traders will get suckered into something, okay? You, uh, you don't want to be offended by, by 
you know, when I, when I, when I use the term trading crowd, all oh, the trading crowd, uh, they're, they're so stupid in this situation. They'll do this, they'll do this. Well, guess what? I'm part of the trading crowd sometimes as well. And I do the stupid things as well. So, you know, we, we kind of make fun of, uh, stupidity on the market, but when it comes down to and what, what we're trying to do is do, we're trying to be less stupid is all we're trying to do. We're going to make dumb mistakes. We're going to be part of, uh, what creates these patterns at times. We're going to get suckered into moves. Uh, all we're trying to do is is diminish it as much as we can. Can we can we not get suckered in as easily uh, uh, or as often as is the next guy? And that's all the edge we're trying to to get here. Okay, so um, but like I said, the better we can recognize some of the stuff, the the easier it can be to say, ah, oh, I don't know. You know, I don't know if I want it, it, it. For example, if you've if you've ever been like ripped off before or something, some scam artist or, you know, and it could be as simple as, as some salesman at a store that talked to you into something. Well, what happens is, is that when you when you've had that happen to you, well, the next guy that's trying to use the same tactic with you, trying to pressure you into signing something or whatever, you recognize it, and you're not going to be that sucker the second time around because you you're recognizing those those tactics and. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say it couldn't happen again, but you're less likely to get suckered in again because you're recognizing those tactics that were used the first time. Kind of the same type of principle here that we're we're trying to recognize this behavior, but that's what wave B is. And then what happens is you get wave C, which is usually the move that kind of flushes out the remaining uh, buyers. Uh, it, it opens the door to, it, well, it, it creates the bottom for that correction or the end of that correction. And it allows for the next healthy rally to take place. This is where, this is where the professionals are waiting for. They're waiting for that final move down. Now, that's a big question here. Is is you know now remember a couple of weeks ago we were saying well this could be was this the ABC pattern? It did pull back to the breakout area. We did start to move up on that day right there. Um, but I think now we have to look at is is this wave A? Was this wave B? And is this wave C? And now, another thing to point out is that that uh, a lot of times I look to trade a wave C or I say a trade a wave C or a wave three because they could look the same. Let's say you have this big downward move right here, and this is maybe wave A, wave B, And this might be a rally. This might be a wave C for a bearish correction. So you do get this upward move, but it might not go very far. And then you get the big decline. It's not done dropping. The other possibility, though, is that this is the bottom right here. And this is wave one. This is wave two. And you're in for the biggest part of the rally. This wave three tends to be the most powerful wave within within the five wave count. This is all Elliott wave I'm talking about right here. Elliott wave analysis. And this could be wave three, and then you get four, and then five. So you, you could be on the verge of a huge move up. And at this point right here, you don't know which which way it, it could go. It could go either way. It could be just the, the correction within the trend or a big part of the trend reversal here. So where we're at right now is this could be wave C, wave A, wave B, wave C. In which case, what we would what we would see probably is it would need to show up tomorrow. In fact, I would say it would really have to show up tomorrow to get some sort of a bullish reversal handle or what have you. Whether you open lower and then you end up trading higher and at the highs of the day by the end of the day, but you're still you're still lower than the day before. That would be a bullish candle. You know that that bullish hammer formation where you open lower, you trade down, then buyers push it all the way back up. Something like that would you like to see. You could get a bearish, a bullish inside day where we actually gap up and we close higher than where we open, but still within the the bearish candle from today that's going to be forming today. I'm assuming that we're going to close near the lows of the day today, just the way it's been acting and the way the VIX spiked up today. Um, or you could look for it to maybe open a little bit higher and close above today's high. That'd be a bullish candle. Um, but you'd want to see some sort of a bullish reversal 
right now. The reason why it's important that it's right now is because we're right at the spot today, and who knows how this this may even look worse at the end of the day, but we're right at the point where if if this is a bullish ABC pattern where wave C is about the same length as wave A. That's one of the characteristics of an ABC pattern you look for is that typically the ABC pattern will be complete when wave C is about the same length as wave A. It doesn't have to be exactly the same length. It could be a little bit shorter. It could be a little bit longer. But we don't want it to be extremely longer. When it starts to look twice as long as wave A, it's not. It's probably not a wave uh, C. It's probably a wave three. You're probably in a, a five-wave move down. And see, that's the other thing we got to be concerned about here is – Remember how we talked about a while back? Let me back out and for those that are new. One of the things we discussed a little while back was when we started to break, uh, let's go to a two-year chart. We can see this a little bit more clearly here. <coughs> Excuse me. When we broke this downtrend line, and that's terrible trend line I drew, but that's all right. Um, one of the things we looked at was that possibly we're in this huge correction where this whole downward move was just wave A, that you might get A, B, C for wave B, and that you might be starting a wave, a larger wave C down. Now, this would be a very devastating move, should be a very devastating move if that's what's taking place. But now that you're, we're down around this area here, we're, we're at a spot where Either, either you know, if you're if you're looking at this as a trend reversal and we're reversing trend, which it could be, you know, we did break out of that downtrend line. This would need to hold right in this area here as a wave C and start to move up pretty quickly, because um, the further it drops, if you already we're sitting at a, if you look at just this move up right here, we're we're already at about a 50% retracement of that. You start dipping below that, you get down this area right here. And now, not only have you retraced uh, too far for a, a bullish um, correction, you've got a wave C that's now twice the length of wave A, which means it's probably not a wave C. You're probably in a wave three. And what you're probably looking at is a – well, what we immediately focus on, if we drop a little bit further right here, we'd, we'd immediately start focusing on those October lows again as a possible – well, obviously, you'd look at this, too. Does this hold a support? But you're probably – you're probably dealing with a bearish ABC pattern and, and heading for that, at least to go back to those October lows, probably exceed them a little bit. But you're looking at probably a much more bearish uh, scenario there. Now, with what came out, what's come out recently with with the, the economic numbers and the, the Fed, the Fed's been saying all along that they're expected to keep rates up. Now there's rumblings that they may have even more hikes, uh, you know, or, or possibly even another 50 basis point hike. I think that's what's kind of spooking the market right now. It's showing up in the bond market as well, which we'll take a look at here in a little bit. But um, but that's you know the the, the uh, it, there, I could go on and on. I don't want to just repeat everything I've been saying for months, but uh, you know. Again, we the, the thing that's bothered me is that we've never had a major bottom without a panic sell-off. That means the VIX above um, above uh, the VIX moving up above 40, um, at least above 40, and um, it's just hard for me to it's hard for me to just. It, <laughs> just assume that this time it's different, although it could still be. And, and, you know, if we start rallying right here, I'm going to be turning, you know, right back to being bullish. Um, if this does end up looking more like a, a, a bullish ABC pattern. <clears throat> Sorry. Hold on just a second. All right. <clears throat> All right, so and and like I said, this this should play out. We should know very quickly. Yeah, again, you always have to allow for a pause day. What if what if tomorrow we have just a doji or something? You know, an indecision day. You always have to allow for that to happen. So to say it's got to happen tomorrow uh, could be Thursday. That's another thing that's going to screw me up this week. Is that uh, I, I today feels like Monday. It's not. It's Tuesday. I, I may I may think 
uh, you know, act like tomorrow's Tuesday or something like that, or say something like that. Um, uh, but tomorrow's Wednesday and then uh, Thursday. So I'd say either tomorrow or Thursday, we would see, if it's going to reverse here, we'd see a bullish reversal candle of some sort. But the VIX is signaling that this probably has further to drop as well, which is another reason uh, why I, I I feel like less likely that this is a, uh, a bullish ABC pattern. All right. Um, the other charts are going to look about the same. The Dow, and by the way, again, you know, it, you know the Dow, you, you, well, one thing on the Dow that we were looking at is we were drawing this triangle pattern and today we're breaking that triangle so that would be more bearish uh, looking at the Dow but you know that that could mean that oh, what if it just means it comes down to here and finds support you'd have a you've got now instead of a triangle pattern it's just more of a flag pattern you know it's it's more of this type of move uh, just today breaking that trend line doesn't necessarily mean that you, you're going to have a massive drop but but it is one of those signals that we were expecting it to break out above that range. It didn't do it. Um, the NASDAQ, again, same thing. Uh, you do have, let me go to one year chart here. You do have uh, quite a bit of support where we're sitting at right now. But again, again if, it, if it starts rallying in the next day or two or shows a bullish reversal there, then it would make sense that it's holding that support. This could still look like a bullish ABC pattern. This whole chart could look more bullish. Um, and so Thursday, I'm, I'm assuming Thursday, we're going to have a little bit better idea of, of uh, which direction we're breaking. Um, and uh, which of those is more probable? You know, is this a wave C or are we in wave three going down? <clears throat> Russell, now the Russell has, you know, when you back out and look at that same chart or same support area, the Russell, we've actually broken below it. Clearly broken below it today. So, you know, if you're, Assuming the Russell is is leading the way or it has a leadership element to it, Russell and the Nasdaq tend to be leadership uh, indexes for the Dow and the S and P. Typically, that you know that could be a little bit more of a bearish uh, sign there. Uh, the small caps have been leading the way up. They they in fact, uh, if you look at um, uh, you know, on, on some of these moves here, although this still looks sluggish, but on some of these days, there were there were days where the last week where the the Nasdaq was down, but the 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 Russell was actually outperforming and was up when some of the other indexes were down. Now you're having a big down day. It's it's uh, it's down by a much bigger percentage than the other indexes. See, the Russell's down two and a half percent. NASDAQ only 2%, and I say only, but 2%. Dow 1.5%, S&P roughly 1.5%. So they're getting the, the Russell clearly, you know, having the bigger move. That would tend to be a little bit more bearish. But there again, could it just be wave A, wave B, wave C? Well, we, we should know here pretty quick. All right, bond market. Uh, yet last week we were saying we I talked about the retracement level, and then as we broke that here was that six one eight retracement level of this move up. You start to get below that, and the probability starts to shift. It becomes it becomes much more likely that you're going to move down towards this low right here. So last um, Thursday. We, we we had broken below that that retracement level, and I said it doesn't mean it's not possible that it's a, it, that it, this could just be a deep retrace, retracement. We could go right back up, but it's it, it changes the probabilities. Now it's more likely, it's less likely that we're going to rally back up. More likely we're going to come down and test these lows, if not break below them. 
And so it tried to fight a little bit on Friday. Um, and that was a bullish engulfing pattern, which tends to be, that's a bullish reversal pattern. But hopefully you're seeing, and, and this is a point I always make, it's just always rarely heard, that uh, although these, these, these price action candles, you know, they predict moves many times, and, and usually a high percentage of the time, you're going to get some sort of bullish move off of a bullish engulfing pattern. They don't always work, and that that has to be that way. Otherwise, if they if they always worked, we wouldn't do anything else but look for uh, bullish and bearish candle patterns and trade them. But um, you know, sometimes sometimes when you see it and you're learning about it, you see it work, and because they tend to work a high percentage of the time, they they seem to work every time. You know. I remember when I first learned about candles and I got so excited. I thought, man, I, I figured it out. I, I figured out the magic or the, the secret of the market. And it was because I had had like eight winning trades in a row off of trading a, a couple of these candle patterns. And then I had, I, and so I was getting greedy and then a candle for, I can't remember which one it was that showed up. And I, and I got aggressive and I traded it really heavily. I put it, I said, boy, I made this much money on these eight losing tra eight winning trades in a row. Let's go all in. It wasn't all in, but it was close to all in on this candle formation and it blew up on me and it was an option trade. So I didn't have time left and, and I about destroyed my account on one of those that didn't work out. And that was my first hard lesson that, uh, that, uh, you know, there is, you can't know exactly what the market's going to do, and it will make sure you, you don't know exactly what it's going to do from time to time by making the lower probability move. And it did. Uh, today, it made the lower probability move, which it should have had a little move up off of that candle formation that didn't gone down. But that also strengthens the, the direction. Uh, it shook off. There was a big momentum shift right there. And again, the context is important. You already had a big drop. So you get a big drop and you get a bullish engulfing pattern. I'm telling you, well, it used to be like 85% of the time you're going to get a rally off of it. Now it's with engulfing patterns because they're so easy to spot and see. I think and so many people are learning about them. Um, they're, they're, the, the reliability of those has probably dropped to closer to, you know, 70%, I'd say, 70, 75%. Um, but, uh, and then by the way, those aren't exact percentages. I'm just thinking, thinking in, in general terms, uh, with, with my experience with them lately over the last few years, they haven't been as reliable as they used to. I remember when they first, when I first started trading, they were about as reliable as, as you could get. Um, and by the way, it's not just people learning about these. You've got, these are, the candle formations can be programmed for computers to recognize them, and so you're you're you know, sometimes you're battling against computers, and and what I've been suspicious about uh, over the last couple of years is is our computers manipulating candle moves, uh, meaning making making it look like a bullish engulfing pattern, and then they're immediately shorting when the market opens the next day, and and they're trying to all those those uh, retail traders are. Traders like me that are looking for these that, that uh, know the, the probabilities of them, they trade against it. By the way, that's that's happened since the beginning of the market. So if you if you're worried about manipulated moves, that's another thing that's going to be part of a market. If you go read uh, books, uh, trading books from back in the 1900s or 1920s or whatever, you have the same arguments that you see today. Everyone says the market's rigged. The market's rigged. Well, you go back to the 1920s. They were saying the market is rigged too, you know. J.P. Morgan is 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 uh, manipulating the market, and and these big titans of industry, uh, their their trading firms are manipulating the market. And yeah, it's part of human nature. It's part of human history. So you can either just stay away from it and say, I'm not going to participate because it's it, it can be manipulated at times, or you can get in and dig in and say, okay. How can I learn to recognize when it might be manipulated? Or more importantly, how can I manage my money, manage my trades to where I'm less likely to be affected by manipulation? And one of those is don't do what I did back then those years ago and say, boy, it's worked eight times. Let me bet it all. It's going to work a ninth time. 
it wasn't that it, it the problem wasn't that it didn't work that ninth time. It was because I over allocated capital that ninth time and about destroyed me. So, so you, you, you don't, don't get too caught up in this stuff. It's real easy, by the way, especially when you've had a losing streak, it's real easy. You don't want to admit that uh, you're misreading the market or, or your, um, you know, you, you don't want to admit that, that, you know, that, that it's you or you're the problem or, or you're making a mistake. And sometimes it is, it's just market conditions in general, but you know, you, you, there's a tendency to want to put blame somewhere else. And it's easy to say Elon Musk, it's Elon Musk's fault. And by the way, as recently as, as just a few years ago, I had this problem where, where, you know, you, you'd see the price action line up. It, you, you were going to get this move and then, Trump would text, uh, would uh, tweet something, and it would mess up the trade. I kept putting the blame. It's, it, it, if Trump would just stop tweeting, then I, you know, I'd, I'd see more consistent results. And, and no, it wasn't about that. Is I had to adjust, make sure I was careful not to. I was really careful not to get too aggressive with moves because they could be undone that quickly. And we saw it was it was more beginning of his term that the because the mar it took a while for the market to get used to it, and then what you noticed towards the end of the term was that you you didn't get as big a move off of some of those tweets because a lot of times they were they were just noise you know and so um but anyway, I don't know what got me way off topic there, but uh you know that that the fact that it reversed that. This was a bullish reversal momentum. It looked like it was going to reverse back up. The fact that it dropped right back down again just erased that bullish momentum, and and, is, and it actually made it more bearish when that happens. So, not only do I think it's more likely we get down to this level here, but uh, we could end up breaking below that. Now, it, again, could this still be? You know, we have this big move up. Could this still be wave A, wave B, wave C, and maybe you break a little bit lower there, but that's it, and then it takes off? That's possible, and that, that's why I'm not overly bearish on bonds right now because, you know, it does, you know, when you look at, let's go to a two-year chart, you can see it a little bit better. It does look like you're, you come all the way down. It, it does look like you're starting to turn the, the corner into an uptrend. Um, just, just in the fact, well, just when we broke that downtrend line, you know, we broke it, broke above it, came back and retested it. Um, it, you know, I'm not saying it's, it can't go lower than these lows, but that's probably, it's looking more and more like that. Those were the lows there. Um, uh, who knows, you know, if, if we get a big, if the market drops down to those October lows, we could see bonds get back down to those, those lows as well. But it's very similar to what the market market looks like. It could be reversing into an uptrend, and and you know, if we go back, you know, one of the things I talked about um, again, I don't know what you almost have to uh, you have to listen for these updates for a while because I I uh, I'll say stuff, but it it could be you know the the, the we we don't see the move that I talk about. It may be a month or two before we see the actual move take place or something I talked about. But um, but one of the things that I one of the reasons behind it, the the expectation that maybe this is just way A, oops, this is way B. And I I was expecting way B to get up here a little bit higher, and then maybe a bigger wave C down. And that still could be the case, by the way. I'm just but one of the reasons was that the market, um, the, the, there's too many people that were bearish on the market for it to, to uh, drop much further. And, and and that still could be the case, that, that we need to go up a little bit higher to get more and more people thinking the bottom is in. This is the bottom. We're done. We're confidently buying. Um, it's over. The bear market is over. And then that's when you can get caught off guard, and that's what kind of creates that panic. I don't know if we've rallied enough to to create panic, a panicked drop. Um, I mean, the VIX is signaling that it is that that it's been way way down low, too low. That 
professional traders aren't aren't positioned for a big drop to to hedge themselves. They'd all be scrambling at the same time to do it. Um, but uh, but that's something that you know it, it, we had to get rid of the, the, the too much bearishness in order for it to be able to drop again. Um, and by the way, this is all good. You know, it, you may say, well, Jerry, why are you wanting the market to drop? Uh, well, because this stuff needs to take place in order to create a solid bottom. Uh, if you don't get a solid bottom put in, then it's harder to have confidence in the bull market that follows. Um, and, uh, and, and, and so it's, it's more of a personal thing. I, I would prefer to have confidence in, in the bull market as opposed to the uncertainty of every day of well, we could be going either way and, and have that extend out two more years. We could go be going either way, uh, you know, and it, it would show up in the results. You you get a sideways market for two years and, you know, look at our, our my portfolio results. It, it, we haven't moved anything for, we've been stuck in the same uh, price level. Now, the good thing is we haven't lost money or much money, you know, it fluctuates. We've just been stuck in this level here. And that's what happens in sideways markets. You do a lot of work for ha a fraction of the money. You work twice as hard for half as much money, not even half as much. Sometimes it's only a quarter of as, as much money. So from a selfish point of view, I want movement. I want either we're going up or we're going down. I can make money when we're moving. I can make money pretty easily when we're moving, I should say. Um, and with this system in particular, you make you make money easier in a bull market condition. So I'd rather just get it over with. Let's get it over with. Let's let's put in that base, get the pain out of the way. We can get to work on on making the big money on the way back up. All right. So gold, gold. Uh, it's still kind of dipping down a little bit. We had a little bit of a, a bullish reversal uh, on Friday, but we're we're back down a little bit today. Um, last Thursday, we were talking about, you know, could this be a little bit of a bullish ABC pattern? You know, corrections tend to look more choppy, more sideways. This doesn't look overly sideways. This looks more like an impulsive move. So if this, this could be that this is just wave A, we get a little bit of a rally for a B, maybe we're just in the midst of a larger correction in gold. We've had a big run up off the lows. So could it be that, you know, we had this big run up right here. This is maybe just wave A, wave, you get wave B, wave C. Uh, we could be getting just a lot of back and forth in gold over the next um, a couple months or so. Um, now, it doesn't have to do that. Um, you know, when it when when especially commodities, they they tend to um, they tend to keep going up in overbought conditions. They they sometimes they'll have real quick corrections uh, where they just barely move and then they take off again. Um, uh, but this this the way this looks is it, it looks. You, you could make an argument that that's wave A, wave B, wave C, and it might very well be that way. But again, this is more corrective, more sideways. You know, that's, you know, again, it gets back to that argument of possible, probable. It's possible that this could be an ABC and it's going to go right back up. But typically, ABC patterns tend to be more sideways. There could be a little more chop in this. And maybe, maybe this is a trend reversal. Maybe. If this is impulsive, maybe you're getting choppy corrective up and then you're going down again and we're we're trending back down and go. Now that's another thing we'll have to keep an eye on if it continues to drop, especially if it continues to drop sharply. Oil, oil's been stuck again in this range. And that, that may be just what it's gonna do for a while. Um, we talked about the floor down here, possibly with, um, U.S. government buying back oil to to replenish the strategic oil reserves. Um, you know, 
it, it, how it behaves in this range, it could it could be pretty erratic. Again, last Tuesday we were talking about this looking still corrective. This was impulsive. We should be going higher. Then you have the sharp drop on Friday. Bullish reversal candle though. It opened lower, closed higher. But then we had opened higher. It looks like it's going to close lower. I don't I don't know if it's going to work towards the bottom part of this, or upper part of this. Um, it's moving sideways right now. So that's the trend. Uh, in sideways trends, it's it's really difficult to know the day-to-day -day movement, the probable movement. It, it, it really can go either way. And, and the way it's been behaving, it's just whipsawing. And um, one of the reasons why I'm trying to avoid some oil trades in general is because of that, uh, that whipsawing. I want to see a little bit more of a probable move ahead, up or down, to trade it. Uh, the dollar has been moving higher, and I think that's another thing that's been weighing on the markets. Now, one of the things we talked about last week is, well, could this just be a bearish ABC pattern right here? So, so you got the dollar in kind of the same position as the as the market. Is this a bearish ABC pattern where the market might have a bullish ABC pattern, which the market's been moving inversely? So, if that's the case, and the dollar starts dropping, you could see the market rally. But this could also be a trend reversal. This is maybe wave one, wave two, and we're about to see the dollar explode for wave three. That would be very bearish for the market, at least right now. We would assume that. So that's an important relationship we want to keep an eye on. And um, if you're if you're not look, checking the dollar chart each day to see how it looks as well, you might you might want to kind of be keeping an eye on that because uh, that that's partially what's what's dictating what the what the market's doing at least right now the vix let me flip this over to so so now the, the we were so this is what was bothering me is we were rallying but we were we were rallying below 20 on the vix it, it just i just you're just not especially in a bear when you're still in a bear market you're just not going to get um a big rally with the VIX that low, it, it, it it's not like, it, again, not, not, could it happen? Yes, not probable though. It's very unlikely that we're gonna get a strong continued rally with the VIX this low. So this is actually good, even if you, if this is a, a, a bullish ABC pattern, this is good that the VIX is spiking up here a little bit higher. Um, to to because uh, now if that is a bullish ABC pattern and we're going to start rallying, there's room now for the VIX to come down and to come back down again. Um, now I need to see bullish uh, confirmation because again I don't want if this is a wave three down, I don't want to get my head chopped off on this. So don't go run out and don't say well it could be a bullish ABC pattern, so I'm going to get in now ahead of it because I'm I'm. I'm more bullish on the market. Well, yeah, if, if you're right, you're gonna you'll make a ton of money picking the exact bottom. But uh, if you keep that up as as part of your it, it, part of your strategy, it, you're, you're trying to pick bottoms, pick tops. You're gonna lose a lot of money very quickly. It's probably not gonna end well. You know, you need to have some confirmation on on your trades. Um, that not be a lot, but should be better than well i'm just going to assume this is the bottom i'm getting in right now um but it also shows you in context here that we're nowhere near fear fear is at 30. see ideally what i would like to see is i'd like i'd like to see that abc if that was a bullish abc pattern on the market i'd like to see wave a push the vix up to about this level wave b actually keep it elevated maybe comes down a little bit on some of those updates but stays elevated and then you get wave c coming down and the vix gets up there close to 30. that's the most bullish condition you could ask for because the abc pattern flushed out enough of those those sellers to where you could really get a good rally off of that and then you could really drop you have room to drop on the VIX where it could come work its way back down like it did right here work its way back down to those lower levels 
Um, now, 40 is, is panic, and that's where we were looking for a panic bottom. We didn't get it this whole last year. Um, you know, that if we get a market sell-off, big market sell-off right here and get that VIX above 40, that would that would cause me to be able to earn a lot more bullish and uh, and, and feel like the bear market is, is uh, very close to being over. So we're not there yet. If this could be wave C, and we're just barely getting into the concern area, you know. Uh, this is complete complacency below 20. Now we're just getting a little bit concerned. So if you hear someone on TV say today, oh, the, the market is, is uh, really fearful today or the market is scared today, that's not the way it's been. In fact, if you watch, if you follow the day all day long here, we opened lower, but we've just been steadily going down. We haven't been just... With your panicky in, in that, you, you drop, you see these big drops and, and they just keep dropping dramatically. It's like, this has been kind of orderly or steady. Um, which means it's those machines that are bringing it down. A lot of it's probably just profit taking. We have this big run up. This is the first time we, we're seeing, uh, you know, seeing more, more, uh, or a stronger sell off day. Let's, let's cash in some of those gains from the, the previous move there. Um, but the fact that then this is why it, what's making me feel like um, this is maybe more than just wave C is like I said we're not even at the fearful area right here. When you get this start of of increased volatility like this, this where you notice the spike in the VIX, it's usually it's usually just the beginning. It, it, you're usually going to get get a few more down days. Um, ahead of that and we're already sitting at a at a point where we we really can't go down much further and have this still be wave c and so that's why i'm leaning more bearish right here um but you know like i said this market is 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 uh I, you know i don't have a lot of confidence in any move right now uh with what it's done over the last uh, few months so i'm i'm pretty cautious here um and, and I'm very cautious in assuming that that we're just going to go lower from here. All right. Chip stocks, same thing, you know, same same exact thing. It, 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 this is wave C. It's a pretty – already we're a little bit longer than wave A. It goes much more where you're twice as long as wave A. It's not like likely a wave C. You're probably in a wave three of some sort. You do have a little bit of support in this area here, a little bit below where we're at right now. You want to see if that holds as support. But again, with the fact that, that this is looking a lot sharper to the downside, chip stocks tend to have been the leadership. They're down 2%, over 2%. So they're, they're dropping a little bit more than the market, the other averages at least. Transport, same thing. They're almost down 3% to 2.8%. And they've already broken below support area. Now, you're, you're making sure you're comparing the transports to the Dow Industrials, not not the S&P, but, um, but it's definitely down much bigger percentage than the Dow Industrials. So it, it, we're seeing if that's maybe leading the way down um, itself there. Bitcoin, Bitcoin might have already bottomed. Um, like I mentioned many times, the, the move down in here um, had all the feel of a bottom panic selling. How how much further is this going to drop? That uh, you started to see the the fraud that came out of some of that stuff. You see that at, at market bottoms a lot of times, uh, and um, big run up right here, and then you know it's it's kind of back and forth. It hasn't dropped much with today's drop. Um, and so what could happen if you're looking at it, if you're saying well, Bitcoin might have already bottomed, because not all markets are going to bottom at the same time. And this is a, another clue that you look for. If the market does go down to those October lows and, and uh, goes, goes lower than those October lows, you'd look at Bitcoin and see, does it do the same? And what could happen is the market goes lower and, and bit, maybe this is a wave A, wave B, wave C, and Bitcoin comes down into here or something. And then the market bottoms and 
Bitcoin starts. So the Bitcoin could have already bottomed, and it, it does go down with the market going down, but it, it ends up having a higher low when the market goes to a lower low. Again, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but um, that's something I would look for if the market does, if the S&P does go down and test those October lows or goes below those October lows. Do you see Bitcoin do the same? If not, then, then you know, that's probably the bottom there. And if it has a higher low, that'd be a pretty bullish sign on, on Bitcoin. So, uh, again, this is not an endorsement to run out by crypto. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if you wanted to start to build a dabble in it or something like that, um, you know, you could you could start to look at look at that that maybe it's um, it's starting to turn the corner again. It's definitely looking a lot more bullish than it did longer term at least. Uh, high yield corporate bonds. This is looking almost worse than the TLT chart, but um, that's something the market's been watching too, is, and that's that's been pretty looking pretty bearish. All right, so. Overall, again, uh, the market um, kind of in a critical spot here. We'll see how it trades in the last hour. Maybe it comes off these lows of the day and, you know, the people buy into the close. You remember, professionals tend to close the market, and that's why I, I put a lot of emphasis on the, on the close. The, 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 the adage is that amateurs open the market, professionals close the market. That's not entirely true. There are professionals trading when the market opens. But, um, you know, if you follow that general guideline, uh, you know, how, how things close. And by the way, that's what creates these candles is, you know, how things close. If, if we close at the lows of the day, that's a very bearish looking candle. If, if it comes all the way back up in the last hour and closes higher than where it opened, it opened right here, that'd be a, a pretty massive bullish um, hammer candle. And if that happens at the, what looks like the end of wave C, that'd be very bullish for the market if it were to do that. So I don't think it will, but um, uh, but uh, that's something to to kind of watch in this last hour. See if it it could be the opposite too. It could be all the way down here, and we don't have to wait till Thursday. That's clearly not only is that a huge down day, but now you're looking at you know, wave C being twice the length of wave A, which is not likely to, it's not likely to be a wave C, you're probably dealing with a wave three down at that point and you're, you got further to drop. So you know, keep an eye on either one of those things taking place. Now, having said that, I don't, I don't really have a lot I want to, want to um, um, recommend, but I will go over a couple patterns to at least maybe put into a watch list. Uh, under aerospace, I still continue to like um, Lockheed Martin LMT. It's got an 89 strength ring, so it's kind of borderline there. But um, you know, it had its kind of all these um, defensive stocks had these this big dip recently, um, started to move back up. This is one that I just you know there. There, with again, the world demands for weaponry right now is is pretty high. Um, again, as long as they manage the business right, which they they typically do, they typically have smart people running things, and um, you know, there's there's definitely reason to believe that, uh, that they're going to be making money for for several years here. But that's not the only you know only reason why I would would consider. I do like the fact that that latest pullback came back to a support area right here and it held. Now, again, the big key on this one would be, does it break out above here, break out to a new high? Uh, now, we're far enough away from that where you wouldn't necessarily have to wait till it breaks out. Um, you, know, you could put a stop. Let me zoom back in again. You could you could put a stop. Uh, well, I, I'd probably wait. You know, that's a bearish looking. Well, that's more of an indecision candle today, but with the market conditions, it could be maybe this is A, B, and you get a market sell off, and this is wave C. I don't know that I would want to to jump in, um, but I mean, you could put a stop down below here to manage risk. 
if it if it does um, if the market does look more bullish and this does go start going back up, you could put a stop down below there. But overall, and you know, like I said, would it hurt too much to to even wait for it to break out? If this if this breaks out, it probably means the market is done going down, and and that and it's probably going looking more bullish. And you know, it's the, you can take the top of the correction, the bottom of the correction, project that distance upward, and you have plenty of room to to uh, pump plenty of money to make if it does break out. That may not be a bad idea. Put it in a watch list and just kind of wait on it a little bit. The other one was in industrial products. Um, And it's this uh, Applied Industrial Technologies AIT 95 strength rank. Again, down today. Uh, but again, this looks like a corrective pattern. This looks impulsive. I wouldn't, you know, I'd be, again, putting this in a watch list because it, it could still pull down a little bit, come down a little bit further. Let me turn the signals on here. Could be that this is wave A, wave B, and you get a wave C down to that breakout area or something like that. But overall, the trend is is pretty nice, and then maybe it doesn't. Maybe the market holds right here, and it comes back up and by the breakout. There were a lot of candidates out there, as you can imagine, on big down days. There's not, there's not a lot of great patterns out there, bullish patterns at least, to to look at. Real quickly here, uh, the portfolio I did do uh, last week. Uh, well, on Friday, I think it was Friday I did this. The, like I said, that the, the rally just didn't feel like it was going to hold up. That candle didn't feel like it was going to hold up. So I, I went and got into the SARK, which is the Short Arc Innovation Fund. It's worked out pretty nicely today with the market dropping. Um, but I wanted to hedge. I didn't want to get out of anything. I wanted to hedge. But one thing I'm going to have to keep an eye on going into the close is I'm very close to some stops. Newmont um, with gold dropping. I had a wide stop on there, but it's it's almost at it. Uh, I'll keep an eye on that one. If it, what I usually like to do is if it's going to close below my stop, I'll go ahead and stop out. Um, so you know you might. We might have a class. You might see the current price is below my stop, and maybe I do in class just to show people oh, I'm going to stop out and do it and be able to do it in class. But I like to I like to get a closing price below my stop is 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 when you know when I decide to stop out <coughs> or when I when I go stop out of a trade. Uh, first solar is getting pretty close. Oh, actually, it's below now. So I might I might be stopping out of uh, first solar. FMC is real close. SGML had a big nice big move today. There's talk they might be acquired by Tesla, I think. Um, and uh, by the way, if you don't know that relationship, I think that's important to, to know. Whatever you hear a company is going to buy another company. Um, the company that's being bought will usually skyrocket. The stock will usually go way up on a buyout uh, announcement. The stock that is buying the company will often go down. Now, this is not exact, but it happens almost every case. So if you hear that Tesla is, is looking to buy SGML, well, first of all, the move happens very quickly and it's hard, you, you know, it's almost like you have to be in it or you had some inside information, you knew it was coming, which is illegal to trade inside information, but uh, not that that doesn't happen sometimes. But uh, but just know that relationship, because if you, if you see that announcement, you're like, oh, that's good for Tesla. I'm going to go buy Tesla stock. Well, you're probably going to, over the next few days, you're probably going to be able to pick a Tesla up at a cheaper price. Because that that tends to be the relationship. In fact, let's take a look at it. I wouldn't be surprised if we're seeing that. Uh, now Tesla's down a little bit. It's not down a, a ton there. 
but um, and I'm I'm pretty sure it was Tesla that was that that, that the announcement was. Here's SCML gapped way up today. But just just know that that's typically a, what happens is the company that's buying will tend to go down. The company that's being bought will tend to go up off of that announcement. Um, now be careful going and buying a, a company that's being bought off of a big move like that because what will happen sometimes is that um, oh where was it? I should jot these down because you see them sometimes in the in the sectors sector list here. Um, Gotta find it. Uh, but but sometimes you'll see a stock that um, it goes, it'll go. It, it's kind of humming along, and then it'll just gap up, and then it'll flatline. It won't go anywhere. Well, that's because you know, let's say it's being bought for three hundred dollars. It'll go right to what the price is it's going to be bought, and then it's not going to go any further than that because that's that's what they're buying your shares for. They're, they're, I, what they're saying is, I want to acquire the company. I'm willing to pay you a premium. The stock's down here. I'm willing to give you $300 a share for your, your shares that are worth $200 right now. This is a kind of extreme example, but... So what would you do? What would you do if somebody came in and said, "Now, if you're if you're like, no, this my family has owned this for a hundred years, and I'm not going to sell it." Okay, you're not going to sell it. I, I I don't know why you wouldn't, because <laughs> that's that's a pretty good premium. But it's going to cause a lot of people to say, "Yeah, here you can have my shares. I'll take that quick hundred dollar profit." But it's not going to go anywhere after that. Uh, it's not going to go up any further, and, and it's going to stay that way until the acquisition is complete. And the company now becomes part of the other company, and trade. You know, the, they mix the shares. However, they do the, the accounting or whatever, where they they merge it all together. Um, but um, so on a you know, I'm going to watch this for a little bit here because I. If it, because I don't know if that's the situation here. I just heard that I heard this kind of right before I got on, on the meeting that um, I was wondering why it was up big. Um, but if it's not going to go, like let's say they were going to buy it for thirty five dollars or something like that, and it may not go any further than this, um, then then I may just go ahead and get out and take my overnight big gain there. It wasn't a huge one there. That was only a five dollar move. All right, so I'll keep an eye on those uh, portfolio. Oh, GDX too is pretty close, uh, stopping out. But I'm not too worried if that happens. I've got this SARK that could keep going up if the market keeps dropping, and uh, and we've been stuck right about 137, 138 thousand for quite a while, a few weeks in that range. But that's all right. As long as we're not losing a ton of money in a bear market condition, we're we're okay. Um, you know, we'll get there where where that thing will start jumping up pretty quick. All right, that's all I have. Uh, have a great week, everyone. We'll see you Thursday for the stock specific class, and hopefully we can have some some stocks to look at that day. If not, we'll we'll talk about the market conditions again and and where, where we're at at that point. And maybe we're doing defensive things. Maybe we're back into those inverse ETFs, hedging ourselves a little bit, trying to make some money if the market's going to continue to go down. There's some things we can do. Um, I've got SARK in there right now. Well, and maybe I'll add something else if the market looks even more bearish at the end of today, um, like the SOXS or the you – know, there's a few of these we can use. Um, SPXS, uh, SQQQ, you know, there's, there's different ones you can jump into to hedge a little bit. All right, thanks everyone. Have a good uh, week. See you on Thursday. Bye now.